boogie down. We got the Brockton crowd too. Criminals. So guys, without any further ado, okay? Come on, guys. Bring on in. All right. The first time. For the first time. Actually, do me this favor. Everybody, start a clap. Ready? Together, synchronize. Come on. about 15 minutes ago. read my autobiography, 50 Pounds of Fat. So I looked at him and I said, thanks dad, can you go upstairs and grab me the parmesan cheese? softball and I reached over, I was actually coaching softball, I reached over to grab the score book and I pulled a muscle in my hip. And I, I, went to the, I went to the doctor and the doctor threw me up at the table 
and he gave me a little examination, and you know, he was rubbing my balls and went through my ear and all that stuff. And I, he said to me, he said, Lou, you got, you got a double hernia. I jumped, I rolled off the, the table, and I, I, I stood there, and I leaned against the wall, my pants were down on my knees, and I said, double hernia, what's that from? And he looked at me, and he said, please put your pants on. I'll be in my office, we can talk about it. So yeah, so, so I went to UMass to see a lot of UMass people. Here. car for a little bit because I had a little bit of a beef with the landlord and I remember my sister came up to visit me and she came up and she's like, Lou, you live in your car? And I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. She's like, where am I going to sleep? And I'm like, Steph, I love you. You, can see, you got the whole back seat. <laughs> so I graduated UMass in 91 with a 3.5 on the breathalyzer. <laughs> and then I got a job as a, as a stockbroker, which was... I did that, which was a complete nightmare, a shit show. I did that for about 10 years until every stock that I bought for my clients went to zero. <laughs> so, at, at, as a stockbroker, I met a lot of great people, and I'm not going to mention any names, but Steve Knott is here right now. Him and I used to hang out, he was right out of high pocket. I met the kid, he used to wear a quadruple breasted suit, pinstripe, like his pants, mints, right out of high pocket. And him and I hung out every day, and you know, you learn a lot about people when you go out drinking with them for the first time. So I took the kid with me to a Super Bowl party that my buddy Pavel used to work at this bar. And I don't know if Pavel's here. I think he might be in China selling nuclear warheads. But <laughs> so anyways, he... So, I, so I, Steve, by the third quarter of the game, was speaking Chinese. So I was done with the guy. So I took off on him. And then later that night, all the guys I was with all of a sudden pulled up in my driveway and started beeping the horn, and Steve was in the car, and he couldn't speak English, and he was, you know, completely crushed, and those guys were like, oh, why don't you take the guy home? We don't know what, we don't know what to do with the guy. So I take the kid to my house, I put him in the guest room, he goes to bed, and like any normal drunk friend, if you're drunk, you don't know where you are, you piss in a drawer, you piss in a barrel, he goes in my parents' room. Throws his pants down to his ankles, tees it up. And my father jumped up and gave him a DDT and dropped him. And that was a nightmare, even more so, and my mother keeps asking for the kid's number. <laughs> so, I met my wife, my beautiful wife, Bob Mitchell Bumpkin, right here. The night before I met her on a blind date, and these are all true stories, so feel really good about yourself. The night before the blind date, I got sucker punched outside the alley cat. There was that place. Is. So I go out with the pumpkin on a blind date with two black eyes and a broken nose. And we got a fucking raccoon. And that was great that we got married, but even better that I sued the kid for four grand. And my buddies beat him up and he got arrested. <laughs> But I have a great wife, we've been married for 12 years. And you know you've got a great wife, but after 12 years, she still looks at you when you get out of the shower and she says, ugh. <laughs> so, 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 we, we wind up getting, we wind up getting engaged and we had my bachelor party. And my bachelor party was a bunch of guys here were there. It was in Vegas. It was a like Bellagio two bedroom suite, absolutely awesome. And my buddy G Force, rest in peace, ran the bachelor party. And they got, you know, they got girls. That's what you do at bachelor parties, right? So they brought the girl for the bachelor. They bring them in, and they, the girls are unbelievable. So the best looking one takes me in the room. She puts me in the bedroom. She says to me, "What do you want, bachelor boy?" Hey, I'm talking. Of course, the best one. She, and she looks at me, she goes, what do you want, bachelor boy? And I, I look at her and I go, I want you to take all your clothes off and feed me a cheeseburger. <laughs> so, then we get married, we great, we go on a honeymoon, and if you know me well, I'm 
tight as hell, and love free shit. So we go to, we go to Mexico, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and we, we, it, when you get off the plane, all those dudes are all over you. They're like fucking wasps. They want to fucking sell you everything out of the sun. So this guy offers me free lunch, free dinner, free a bottle of tequila, a, a Mexican blanket, 17,000 pesos, because I didn't even know it was like four bucks. And it's like, we'll pick you up in a limo, we'll drive you there for a 90 minute tour. So the guy shows up on a fucking donkey. And he takes Mindy and I to the timeshare, and Mindy's looking at me, she wants to fucking choke me, because she wants to get in the sun or whatever. So I had to immediately unqualify myself from the timeshare. So the guy asked me, what do you do for a living? So I look at him, and she'll vouch, and I say, I'm in the circus. I juggle, she does the trapeze. We're away in the qualifier. Get that donkey, we're out of here. <laughs> All right. So, so then, so then we have kids, which is the next part of the evolution of the nightmare. So we have kids, and I had, you know, not to be disgusting, but we had a problem having kids because I had a low sperm count. <laughs> and the reason was, I think it's it, when I was born, I had what's called an undescended testicle, not to be gross. What that means is when you're born, your testicle is supposed to drop. But by, one of them dropped, the other one shot up, and I think it's still stuck in my neck. <laughs> so, we, so we finally get pregnant, we have a kid. Great. All I want is a boy. Mindy calls me. I'm pregnant. I'm like, I'm at the Red Sox game. I'll be home in like 20 minutes. She's on the fucking kitchen floor. We got her. We pick her up. We bring her to the hospital. She's in labor. It's great. The birds are humming. She's pushing. The head's coming out. All I want is a boy. All of a sudden, the baby starts coming out. I look. I see the little dink. And I'm psyched. So we wash the baby off. And I'm like, I turn to Mindy. I look at her. And I was just like, and all I can say is it looked like Mindy and I went to a picnic and she sat on a landmine. <laughs> so busted up. Alright, so so Mindy and I lived in Chelsea for a long time. I don't know if you know Chelsea. Yeah. Shit home. So I sent my kid to preschool in Chelsea, and I didn't really think it could have been that, could have been that bad. And we went to the parent teacher night, and I walked in, and I thought I was in fucking Nicaragua. <laughs> Chicken running down the hall, and I said, "Alex, grab your thermos, we're out of here." <laughs> so, so we, so we, um, we went to sell our house to move. And we couldn't sell a house, we had all these open houses and stuff. And, and this is Sue's favorite story, so I have to tell the story. So, I, it was a Friday and I'd been out Thursday night, and on Saturday we had open house. And I was driving home from work and I was on the Tobin Bridge, bumper to bumper traffic, couldn't move, I had to shit my fucking pants. And I wasn't gonna make it, I turned the radio off, I rolled the windows down, I'm sweating them in a suit. It's over, it's done, I'm not gonna make it. So I, just, I just gave up. I just said, fuck it. Just leaned over to the side. Done. So I pull up in my house, in front of my house, and I get out of the car. And I'm, my neighbors are out there, like, playing frisbee. So I go in the house, and I don't want to screw up the rug, because it was nice and clean. But it was nice and clean. So I grab my pant legs, and I waddle up the stairs. And my kid comes around the corner, and he looks at me and goes, Daddy, you all right? I'm like... Daddy didn't wear his diaper <laughs> And I still have the suit. <laughs> and I still wear the suit. kids and I send my kids to camp and all that stuff so I said my, my son goes to day camp and they had like an open house a couple weeks ago it was a family fun night so I go to the open house and we get there and my kids are playing soccer all the couches there all the parents are there 
And Alex was playing soccer, so I said, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, Alex, let me, let me kick the ball in the, in the goal. Whatever, the, whatever, whatever soccer is. So I line the ball up, and I kick the ball as hard as I can. An absolute rocket right off my daughter's face. Swear to God, right off her face. So she's on the ground with that five seconds of silence where I know she's going to start screaming. I pick her up. She's all crying, I grab her, and the counselor's looking at me like she's gonna call the cops. I look at her, I go, is that going in? <laughs> so, Minnie and I took the kids to Big Time Rush the other night. <laughs> right, which is like, the, 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 I sh I, there's no way I shouldn't have done that when I was little. I mean, that those chicks love those dudes. And I could have easily grabbed a couple of kids on my street and we could have our old boy be had two kids on the block. Yeah. Um, so, who's a Patriots fan? <laughs> One month from today is the first game, right? So you know what's going to happen at 7 in the morning, one month from today. Drinking beers like I'm going to the electric chair. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, that's, well, I, I got one more thing. Uh, small dick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dick. We need to have seats. So I got some friends from work here, though, I think. I don't know where they are, but I know they're here. I hate when they... Yeah, Joe, what's up? Hey, hey, Lou, you want to grab a couple beers after work? I'm like, eh, no, there's no such thing as a couple beers after work. <laughs> like, one leads to two, two leads to ten, ten leads to me waking up in my fucking garage with 17 girls with the Wendy's on my chest. <laughs> Listen, I think that roofie's kicking in, and I've been up here for a little bit, I think I gotta take a piss, so that's all I got.